hello 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 I'm back again with you today so I thought I would turn the camera on and share with you some more book page ideas that I've had um, as you will know from previous videos and the giveaway I do love to work with book pages mainly because I do a lot of hard cover journals and I end up gutting the books and I end up with these text blocks and you know it's just a waste not to do something with them so I do a lot of things with book pages and <clears throat> move that over there for me so this morning I've just done two pages together I folded these so let's show you so I've just taken two book pages move it up there so you can see and I literally just folded that in to around there did the same thing there it's not very even because I'm doing it quickly sorry and then I just folded it back the other way and then back that way like that and then obviously that gave me the triangle or the two triangles and I've obviously inked it up and then I've just folded it in half to give me something that when it went into let's use this when it went into a journal I would have a tuck spot and an area to decorate and obviously one on the other side as well so that's how I did that one I then thought I would like a double pocket so I did this one now all I've done here is literally folded it up folded it back down and then that will give me a pocket there and a pocket there or I can put it sideways and I can have a pocket there and a pocket there you don't need me to show you that I'm sure that's very very simple that one and then I use the same principle as that one on here but on the long so that I could definitely have it this way with two pockets and obviously I can decorate these up and stitch those so whilst I was doing that I started doing much more familiar images onto book page that we can then you know stick on as either a tuck spot or you know as a pocket whatever so I did quite a few of those and then I realized that it was very sort of ordinary and square and lots of people have done them and I realized also that I've got this tear ruler well it's one of three actually and I use this tight side all the time you see me use it loads and yet I never use this side or to be honest I don't think I've ever used the other two rulers so I started playing around with this so if I show, move these and I just show you for a minute um, obviously this one you know if I use the tight side you get this small like serrated edge but if you turn it over find the edge if you turn it over you have to be a little bit more careful because obviously the holes are or the grooves are much wider in this but then you get this much more look at the difference you get this much more exaggerated line which generally I don't like which is why I tend to stick to the tighter one but then I had an idea and I thought I could make these in a different way so what I did was rather than using the tight side to tear a square I used the wide side to tear these odd angular pieces a little bit like islands really and I hope I'm not showing you any bad words yeah so I just did those so all I did for that was I simply tore off a whole page from my text block the centre of the book and I took the wider side 
and I just oops see now that's because I wasn't so careful with that one you do have to be a lot more careful with this wide side and you have to sort of tear it much more definitely but it is worth it and you do sort of get the hang of it once you've done a few okay so I've got that one this is my discarded piece and then I went sort of down like that and then up like this and then across like that and that is what gave me this island type shape which I then obviously inked around the edges as we do let's get rid of all them so I've got four I think here one two yeah three four and then I had these now I have a number of these vintage illustration plates um, and what I basically did was I used the method that Yvonne Preston showed recently whereby I just highlighted nine of them and I pressed print on the smaller print so you get a page of completely different ones okay um, and you can see this one I printed onto pre-coffee dyed paper so if we and there's one here okay that's loose so if we take the tear ruler back on the tight side now can you see what I'm doing shall I bring my board in because I do know a few of you find my pretty desk card to visualize on so there we go and I'm just going to use my normal side now and I'm going to tear down here like this okay make that sort of normal square shape get rid of the bits there's so much glue on this mat I can't grip okay I'm gonna get my blending brush and my ink pad and just run round the edge because we have to have an inked edge don't we okay ink around the edge and then having done that I'm going to bring in one of my islands and you see look we get instant double area of um, layering now I've, lay I've inked the edge of that one or this one I've inked the whole sort of thing okay you may want to make it slightly smaller you want a smaller one okay so I'm going to take this one I've got my top layer I'm going to find some of my trusty cheesecloth okay and I want to put some cheesecloth on here so where are my scissors here are my scissors I'm gonna cut it a little bit short up there like that I love that every time I pick this cheesecloth up I get a waft of coffee <laughs> and I want to make sure that it's not the same size so flip that over so it sticks and I want to go about there like that okay and just make it a bit straggly stretch it out a little bit like that and then I'm just basically going to run my glue across as it were the uninked area just because it's sort of through the middle there like that uh, oh no somebody just put something through the letterbox so boo's like oh don't don't know about that i'm just going to tap that down 
as you see. So we've got our two layers brewing there now. And we've got our third layer sit sort of in the middle, there like that. I'm just trying to decide whether I put my fourth layer on top or underneath. I do have these rather pretty uh, coffee dyed paper flower shapes here. So I'm wondering if I might put that one under there, maybe. Maybe not. I do like it like that, actually. I think I'm going to leave it like that because I think I might put my fourth layer under the actual book page on this occasion. So I'm going to glue this up. I'm going to pop him down on the angle. You know I don't like things very straight like that. Okay, and then I need to find um, a journal page or similar to put this on. I think I might use a piece of this handmade gold paper that I've got here like that and I might make this into a topper rather than a journal book page. So I want it about there so there we go look and I think if I lift it up a little bit do we want it over it or do we want it all completely on yes we want it completely on but we want it slightly shorter so I'm going to take it off this side because the pattern is more that side I'm going to take about that much off there, like that. I'm just going to use my scissors to trim up the odd edges. I think we'll have a little bit of ink across that edge. Not too much, just a little bit take away some of the white as it were and now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the Tim Holt stamp set that I've got the field notes one see I'm just going to put that on there um, right now do we want that straight or do we want it on the angle I think the writing needs to be straight yeah the writing needs to be straight that's just gonna bother me otherwise so I'm just gonna ink up this uh, ink oh goodness me glue good glue Claire this is glue not ink ink glue what's the matter with you woman I'm all excited I've bought a oh, it sounds really sad I've bought a new dock knocker for my front door we had a new front door fitted um, about a month ago and of course when they took the front door away as they do they took with them the old door locker. So we've been without a door locker since the door was in. And it does annoy me because whenever anybody comes with a parcel or such like, they, um, they knock on the glass. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> That's my brand new rather expensive glass you're knocking on there, if you don't mind. So, yesterday it finally got the better of me and I bought a new door knocker. So I'm super excited um, that nobody's going to be knocking on my lovely new glass anymore. Do you find it really odd, the things that 
annoy you. It really annoys me, that did. Right, so there you go. This is specimen number 2349. And I think that sort of finishes that off quite nicely. I did get that number out, but it seems a bit odd having two different numbers. So we're not going to use two different numbers on it. We're just going to use that number. We'll put that over there. But I think what we will have in the corner here, use this as a bit of a stamp protector, is we're going to use a postmark. I do like a postmark. So here is my favourite London postmark stamp. And I'm going in on the black rather than the brown. There we go, and then I'm going to put the lines. Where's the lines gone? Oh no, I've lost my squiggle alarms. See, this is what happens. I've actually lost my like Frank mark. Oh well, it'll be on the desk here somewhere. There it is. Look. Pick that up. Pop that on there. So there, I think that is a lovely topper or journal card or whatever you want to call it. So let's stand that one up there like that. And I'm going to do another one. So we've got another one here. I'm probably going to do it very, very sim similarly because I'm not necessarily going to use them in the same book. But it'll be nice, you know, to have a few of them. And I don't think you've ever really got too many florals, have you? So, floral things. Put that down there like that. I'm going to choose another one of these. Oh, I think we used the poppy this time. I am rather partial to a poppy. Hence my name. Perfect poppy. Um, I've always said of all my of all the flowers that you see, purple is my uh, purple poppies are my absolute favourite, and yet they grow wild more often than they do cultivated. Perhaps that's why they're my favourite. Perhaps I'm a bit of a wild spirit. Well, anyone that knows me knows I'm a bit wild. We were watching um, some weird program on telly last night. Clips of, um, you know, uh, family type videos of things that had gone wrong and people falling off ladders, things like that. Um, whilst obviously I don't necessarily think it's funny if you fall off a ladder because you can seriously hurt yourself. There was a clip of a couple having a picnic and they were having this picnic on one of those um, picnic benches that are often in these public places you visit. You know the sort of things I mean, wooden slats and triangular legs and then there's a bench on the side. And um, the woman was sat down on this bench and I'm going to do this one a bit more higgledy piggledy whereas the, the first one was very central. So I'm going to put that sort of across there like that. I think we'll have some of our dyed cotton. Um, so anyway, they, uh, they were having this picnic and the woman got up to get something and she came back to the table and sat down and actually fell off the back of the bench. And, you know, she didn't hurt herself, so it is amusing and uh, well I think it's amusing and hubby just turned to me deadpan face and went I remember when you did that and it's true I am probably one of the most clumsiest people in the world and I did actually fall off one of them benches a long time ago 
But what was so funny about it was that I've got such long legs that when I fell off it, my legs got stuck under the table. So I was just sort of hanging. Don't leave me hanging, man. I was just hanging in midair um, off the back of this bench with my my feet under the table. It was, yeah, it was very amusing. He's right. So there you go. And then he proceeded to remind me that that was just before I climbed all over the dinosaur. <laughs> there is a photograph somewhere. Um, we've taken, I mean, this is a long time ago, you know. Grandmas don't do things like that, do they? Aha. Uh -huh. um, it's a long time ago when my children were fairly young. And we'd been to one of these places, you know, that you go to as a family. And um, there was this huge, I don't know, um, like plastic dinosaur I think it was a stegosaurus um, and it had these like spines down its back and I chose to use the spines as a bit of a ladder and I climbed up onto this dinosaur there's pictures of me somewhere sitting on the very top of this dinosaur see crazy always been crazy but there you go saved me uh, you know, my nan used to say, all the time you're crazy, you won't go mad. So just maybe that's the reason I'm not mad. I'm not convinced. But, and hey, maybe I am mad. Nobody's been uh, brave enough. Do we have a butterfly on there? Nobody's been uh, brave enough to actually tell me. By the way, Kay, you're not funny. You're just mad. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well, never mind, eh? So, I'm going to go back in my black with this one. Oh, and apparently we're putting it just there, whether we want to or not. There you go. We've got a little back black butterfly on there now. And I have actually got a smaller butterfly over here. So, we could do a double butterfly and do this one sort of there. There we go. Yes. You see? And then obviously you can decide whether that goes on to a book page or a topper as this one was. Or maybe even, you know, like on one of these pockets. That's a bit big for that pocket. But it would definitely fit on that one. There you go. So, book page on book page. So, I just thought I'd pop along and share those with you today. And how, you know, sometimes you can find a whole new piece of fun by just looking a bit closer at the equipment you use every day. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Stay safe. Happy crafting. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.